Hello everybody, my name is Kevin Toppenberg. It's a beautiful day out today. Those right there are my wife's pawpaw trees. If you don't know what pawpaws are, they're pretty cool, look them up. Um, today's video, we're gonna get the Bridgeport ready to do some painting. Uh, there was a part that I tried to see if I could just maybe put some Bondo over top of it and just smooth in the areas that had peeled off. That ended up not working so well, but then there was another part that did seem uh, that did seem like it worked. So, uh, short video, hope you enjoy it, and let's get started. All right, let me give an update. I got that mill off of that dolly and up onto some blocks that let me get down and wire wheel uh, around the base, which the uh, rails of the dolly had been holding. Uh, I'm debating about the, the paint here. I decided there were some places that just, you could tell it was really loose and, ch and chipping. So I just kind of hit those areas that were light in other places it seemed like it was on good, I did not do a lot. So I don't know whether I'm gonna be able to come and put some filler over this and, and smooth that out or whether you're gonna be able to see the spotted look through the paint. So I'm gonna have to see how that goes. I had told myself I wasn't gonna fool with the paint and here I am. Uh, just felt like there's never gonna be an easier time than right now to work on it not yet cleaned anything up with this. So I'm going to now start just putting it back together one piece at a time. So I'm gonna to try to work on that. I'm not gonna do any scraping on those ways because I can still see the marks on there and I, I don't think there's any significant wear. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah. Um, so I think that part will be fine. And then I'll just build it back up from the bottom this is the filler I'm putting on there, and then I thinned it a little bit with acetone. I went around the base, and then tried to hit it lightly with the sandpaper as it was drying. I wasn't able to get the metal completely clean, so there are a few places it's not sticking, and I'm gonna have to come back over that. I've been working on my mill, but it's not there anymore right here. I really didn't want to take everything off on this um, paint. Well, I'm filthy because I just finished wire wheeling this. I wore a mask and usually that means you can see the dust coming in around my nose. All right, let me show you. You know, I've, I took this one all the way down to the bare metal and when I did my um, Taiwanese clone I did the same thing and this one just strikes me as a much better casting uh, very few uh, inclusions I mean I can even just point out I mean there's one little one there and maybe one there and one there but overall it looks like a really nice quality thing I can see all the uh, grinder marks where they where they prepped it after coming out of the out of the mold. So I think that looks real nice. Um, I did that because I wasn't able to get my Bondo to stick to what was there before. So um, it's hard work. There's my wire wheel. You would think that, that with that being power and that doing all the work, it wouldn't be hard. But man, holding it up there and it vibrating, that's quite the job. Give this thing a power wash been sitting out for a few days so there's a little bit of flash rust. And I'm going to get all the grit and the sandpaper and all the stuff that was preventing the Bondo from sticking. All right, there I've got it all power washed. I'm going to hit it with my leaf blower, see if I can get some water off of it and dry it a little bit. And then I'll let it dry here in the sun. And I don't think that flash rust is going to harm anything, although I may have to decide if I want to hit that with some light sandpaper, but then that's going to leave sand on it. So I don't know. We'll see. Black man knows when it's time to go. When you back it up and get out of town Watch too many friends Drown in the deep end Running the action down Jake 
chasing that plastic money And you put them in a hole I always wanted something better Now I found the love and I can't forget her Okay. A lot of that uh, rust was really just like on the surface, like a powder. I'd say probably about half of it just rubbed off with a paper towel. You know, before when I was wiping it down, I was just getting a lot of dark. So this is a uh, second towel, paper towel. Uh, not too bad, just a little bit of the carbon coming out. And you can see I'm under a roof here, so it's not in the direct elements, although certainly if it's rain, if it rains, there's moisture, but. All right, so I've been dreading putting Bondo on it, but I think I have exhausted all the other tasks that I can do while I'm waiting. I hope I'm gonna get better. Get to be seen whether that's true. I'm trying to go light this time, just doing thin layers. And then I'm also trying to um, take off some of the ridges when it's um, before it's fully hard. I have a large area to cover, so I thought I'd mix up a bigger batch, but you can see here, it started hardening up and got a lot of gunk in it. So I'm gonna probably fill up that that well a little bit more um, although I do want it to stay as a well to catch oil and everything but that's where I'm at I've got all of it at least covered once and I've been doing some light sanding I need to kind of get it down flat and then see where I'm gonna need to come back and put more on I've been using this method for mixing up my mixing up my Bondo that I like. I have this uh, rolling table that I put saran wrap on and I tape it underneath with some uh, masking tape or painter's tape and it works pretty well. And then rather than having to clean up the, the surface, I just throw it all out and uh, put down some new. That's worked out pretty well. because I've been sanding here for hours. I love sanding, not. Uh, I've gotten this side and this side done. So of course I still have to do the, the base there, the front, and then the back. Well, pretty good. I may have to come back and touch up some stuff. There's a lot of little pits here and there. So I may go over it real light with some additional Bondo. It's looking better. Okay, it's been a few days now. I've got it all sanded. And there are imperfections. I think if this was an automobile, it would be worth going over it some more. But at some point, I don't know if it, if I really need to. I mean, look, for example, um, if that shows up, there's like a little pit, like right in there. You know, and I think that, I think that some of these, the paint will hide over, but you know, stuff like that. I mean, I could come back and do yet another layer and another sanding. I don't know if it really matters. When to stop is always the question. I think I'm gonna call it. Famous last words.
All right, let's take some this old paint off. All right, I've got this all wire wheeled, got all the old paint and Bondo off, with one exception right in there, which I couldn't get my wire wheel in. I'll have to get that some other way. And then I didn't show it, but I power washed it, and then I've blown it dry. And then right now, I wanna work on getting off the bearing that's inside. So this is the way the bearing goes in. I've got this collar. This thing raises up just a little bit. So I'm gonna take this off and then see if I can get that bearing out. Okay, that slipped right out. It just went right in there. And then that collar went on the top to trap it. And this side is flat and this side is raised um, going up to the top, which is in fact the bottom of the knee. So that goes to the bottom of the knee. Okay, because I power washed it, I was concerned that I didn't want any water going in this. So I first hit it with some WD-40, and actually when I first got it out, it was kind of catching a little bit. And then I put in some penetrating oil, and the oil that I put in here very rapidly came out this side, so it's not a sealed bearing. And then I put some of some uh, spindle oil from my lathe, and I've spun it. There's a little bit of roughness but as little as this thing gets used that it just is a thrust bearing for going up and down on the knee i'm going to look into the cost but if it's more than like 20 30 bucks i think i'm just going to stick with what i've got it's got this ugly hole on the bottom it looks like someone drilled through maybe to let coolant come out of the bottom of the knee uh, I'm going to try to see if I can smooth that up a little bit and then I can I can bondo around and leaving a round hole and not that ugly thing. Well, I used a little Dremel-like tool with a die grinder bit in it and then later came back with this kind of, I'm sorry, die grinder bit and then came back with this kind of a chamfering bit and I think it looks better. At least it looks like a hole now. So I can come in and fill this area with bondo. So I think that looks good. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is some fine, high-quality Bondo work. You know, this stuff, I think maybe I'm getting too much hardener in it, and it just starts getting sticky, and I'm trying to slather it on thick because otherwise I've got holes. And it feels like sticky peanut butter. Goodness. Here it is after some sanding. It feels nice and smooth, except for all of that kind of stuff. So obviously I'll have to put some more on. What a tedious job. raining out today so I've done lots and lots of uh, bondo and sanding and bondo and sanding and I haven't shown most of that and so I just want to make sure everyone understands that this is not just something that just quickly happens just because I don't have lots of footage of it it takes long long time 
pretty good. Um, I think I've got all the sides done. This one doesn't have very much um, Bondo left on it, but it's really smooth and it did fill in the, in the, the grooves. I have both the belt sander, which does a pretty good job at making it nice and flat. But then if there's like a high point between this edge and here, it'll leave a dip. So I found that this uh, Black & Decker mouse sander does good at, you know, because it's got a small area, so it can kind of at least take out the lines. Like I see a little line there. I can take out all the lines, and I think that'll look good when it gets painted. So, all right. Trying to decide about this. Um, when I repaired a mill before, I had a hard time with this because it's such a funny shape. Um, I actually put it in that lathe and spun it around and kind of smeared the the uh, Bondo on. But then you still have all of this. Part of me, just wondering, could I just repair these? But I think it's so crumbly. And I don't think that the stuff that remains there, well, there it's being pretty tough. I mean, I may try to put some Bondo and see if I can get it to stick there. That would sure be easier than having to take it all the way off and then put it all the way back on again. I've been using this spoon, this tablespoon, to get the putty out. And that was like one heaping tablespoon and it covered quite a bit. So we will see how that works. Let it dry up. I'm very pleased how this turned out. It sands out uh, nice. Uh, none of the Bondo came off. I made sure that it was good and dry before I started sanding. So I'm happy about that because that means it's going to be a lot easier when I go to um, when I go to fix the ram. So I won't have to take all of the the uh, Bondo off that. So that is a great great improvement. All right, I'm going to put some paint on this. Okay, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, coming up in our next video, we'll get some paint on this thing. It's starting to come together and it's looking nice. Thanks for watching. And if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe and comment and all that stuff. All right, thanks. Peace out. White man knows when it's time.